learning objectives in this lesson you would be learning about manufacturing techniques and the following in detail surface mount technology smt working with wave soldering and reflow oven working with smt rework station smt rework station smd a typical smd consists of few two pins sometimes it has many as more 300 pins if the smd has more number of pins it will facilitate for finer pitch each smd pin is attached with a pad on the board they together form a pin pad it gets connected with separate solder connection if you tend to remove the smd a special process need to be done first we have to heat all pins then the connection need to be heated up they will inducted into a molten state long enough then you can lift off the chip the modern pc boards are densely spaced with smds they are also double sided with multi layers we need to avoid friction we should give solution to pcb to prevent damage to the pcb it will require a careful selection of tools and a safe method now the conduction is done first it is performed basically with use of soldering heat it fits over the smd it also applies heat over all the pins there is some disadvantage in this process it is the iron that will need to be set in high temperature one cannot find when to lift off the chip from the board many types of solder techniques are used in smd they are fine tip soldering it uses conventional soldering techniques this process is done on a much smaller scale this technique is beneficial for single ic's with limited footprint it also useful for smaller boards the heat distribution on a hot plate is far less uniform whereas this phenomenon is not happening in a convection oven it uses soldering paste it reflows the entire board it optimizes soldering process smooth there are three methods to rework station with smt number 1 solder wick here the finest mesh conductive copper braid is used the heat and the capillary action pulls excess solder away number 2 hot air in this method the hot air is used to reflow the solder with components present method 3 desolder vacuum plunger in this method the small negative pressure is applied to suck up excess solder this fine tip soldering conventional equipment has an advantage it is utilized for larger components it causes eye strain hence it needs a steady hand on the machine the fine tip soldering specialized fine tip tools is different it is inducted in hot air rework station am6500 by jbc its fine tip solder tools do the job it performs desoldering process it has hot tweezers and air gun the temperature of reflow process must be conditioned for better performance it should be precise enough to not to damage ic's when excess heat is generated the ic's get damaged hence it should be sufficient for reflow of solder reflow oven is basically large and bulky it is processing on small fraction of a cost the board is inserted after applying solder paste and setting components the end result is perfectly soldered board for a fraction of the cost. The desolder vacuum plunger uses small vacuum to pull solder away from board. It is handheld manual version. It can be heated tip and vacuum. It is combined with SMT rework station. Surface mount technology. The SMT surface mount technology is basically a design standard. It is made for constructing electronic circuits. 
In the electronic circuit boards, the components are mounted directly. They are imprinted on the surface of the printed circuit board. The short form of printed circuit board is PCB. Generally, the components contain small metal tabs or caps. The tabs are attached with soldered mount on the board. It is positioned directly to the surface of the printed circuit board. They are kept on tin lead, silver or gold plated copper pads. Hence, they are called solder pads. If an electronic device is produced, it is referred as surface mount device, SMD. The revolutionary discovery of SMD has largely replaced the through hole technology construction method in the industry. This technology is highly useful for fitting components with wirelets into holes in the circuit board. Both technologies can be used on the same board for components. But they cannot help to suit to surface mounting such as large transformers and heat sink power semiconductors. Periods Terms The surface mount technology was developed in 1960s. It attained high popularity when it was widely used in the late 1980s. The global giant IBM has used this technology for their pioneering works. The design approach was first explained by IBM in 1960 in a small scale computer. Then it was later applied in the launch vehicle digital computer by using the instrument unit. It has guided all Saturn 1B and Saturn 5 vehicles. SMT techniques First, the components were redesigned mechanically. It has enabled the small metal tabs or end caps directly soldered to the surface of the PCB. The smaller components and their placement on both sides of a boat turned as more common platform with surface mounting. This is greater than through hole mounting technology. It has permitted much higher circuit densities. The solder joints often hold the parts to the board. In rare cases, Parts on the bottom or second side of the board shall be secured with an adhesive dot. This is done to keep components from dropping off inside reflow ovens if the part has a large size or weight. The SMT and through hole components may be attached with soldering. It can be made together without adhesive. Then a selective solder mask is utilized to prevent the solder holding the parts in place from reflowing. It also arrests the parts floating away during wave soldering. Assembly Techniques The printed circuit board consists of flat, usually tin lead, silver or gold plated copper pads. They are present without holes. This setup is referred as solder pads. Solder paste is basically a sticky mixture of flux and tiny solder particles. First, it is applied on the solder pads. It is done with the help of stainless steel or nickel stencil by a screen printing process. The components are placed on the boats by paper or plastic tapes. It is fixed on the boats of the production line by the tapes wound on reels or plastic tubes. When large integrated circuits are to be processed, they are delivered in static free trays. The numerical control pick and place machines eliminate the parts from the tapes. They not only remove tapes, but also tubes or trays and place them on the PCB. The machine first enters to a preheat zone. The temperature of the board rises gradually in all the components. It is also achieved in all parts uniformly. The boards then move a zone where the temperature is high enough to melt. The solder particles in the solder paste sticking the component which leads to the paths on the circuit board. The surface tension of the molten solder does major jobs. It aids in keeping the components intact in their respective place. The solder pad geometries should also be correctly designed. Then only the surface tension automatically aligns the components on their paths. There are a number of techniques for reflowing solder. 
first one is referred as infrared lamps where one should use infrared lamps hence this process is called infrared reflow by another method one should use hot gas convection there is one more technology called special fluorocarbon liquids with high boiling points it is becoming popular again and is called vapor phase reflow since environmental conditions are not suitable for vapor phase reflow method this method was falling down the boats shall be washed to remove the flux residues after soldering any stray solder balls that could short out closely spaced component leads in the board rose and flux is taken away with the fluorocarbon solvents a high flash point hydrocarbon solvents or low flash solvents are also used to remove the rose and flux the limonin that needs extra rising or dyeing cycles at last the boards are visually inspected for missing or misaligned components it is also checked for solder bridging if any improvement is needed they will be sent to a rework station a human operator shall repair any errors then the board will be sent to the testing stations to verify that they operate correctly the main advantages of smt are minimum initial cost and time to set up for production only lesser number of holes shall be drilled the automated assembly will be simpler and faster there are some placement machines can place more than 136000 components per hour if there is any small error in component placement they are rectified automatically the surface tension of molten solder pulls components into alignment with solder pads we can place the components on both sides of the circuit board another main feature is lower resistance and inductance at the connection subsequently little unwanted rf signal effects are there you can get better and more predictable high frequency performance under any kind of shake and vibrations you will get better mechanical performance many of the smt parts prices are cheaper than equivalent through hole parts you will also find better emc compatibility lower radiated emissions because of the smaller radiation loop area of course there are many disadvantages of smt they are narrated here manual prototype assembly or component level repair is highly challenging it requires skilled engineers and more expensive tools as it is in any tiny sizes it leads to spacing of many smds one cannot use smds directly with plug in breadboards a quick snap and play prototyping tool as it needs either a custom pcb for every prototype or the mounting of the smd upon a pin leaded carrier smt is not suitable for large high power or high voltage parts for example in power circuitry we cannot use smt combination of smt and through hole construction with transformers heat sinked power semiconductors physically large capacitors fuses connectors and so on mounted on one side of the pcb through holes is common smt cannot be used for the sole attachment method for components because those components are subject to frequent mechanical stress such as mechanical stresses are connectors that are used to interface with external devices they are frequently attached and detached rework if there is any surface mount component is damaged it can be repaired by soldering irons this is also repaired by a non contact rework systems this is the better choice as the smd work with a soldering iron and little expertise there are two non contact soldering methods they are infrared soldering and soldering with hot gas hot air the hot air provides heat during hot gas soldering the entire energy is peeped out from the inert gas the gas basically filled in the system 
engineers apply the gas on the soldering then the components get fitted with board it has many advantages the board gets heated up evenly during the process the heat of the component will never shoot up it gets adjusted with nearby gas temperature the rapid cooling results in small grind solder joint after reflow introduction welcome to the session on wave soldering and reflow oven in this session we will be learning about methods of working with wave soldering and reflow oven reflow soldering reflow soldering is basically a process in which a solder paste is used for temporary attachment the solder paste is a sticky mixture of powder composed of solder and flux the powder is utilized to fix several electrical components for a short period not only attaching them merely but also fixes the components to their contact paths then the entire process of assembling the components is based upon the controlled heat energy provided it melts the solder permanently and connects the joints the process of heating may be done by passing the assembly through a reflow oven the same process is also achieved under an infrared lamp or by soldering individual joints with a hot air pencil however the reflow soldering is the most preferred method of attaching surface mount components it helps to fix up the circuit board although it can also be used for through hole components during the process the holes are filled with solder paste then it is inserted to the component which leads through the paste the wave soldering may be simpler and cheaper but the reflow soldering is not commonly preferred the reason is not to use in pure through hole boards however when it is used on boards containing a mix of smt and tht components and through hole reflow it allows the wave soldering step to be eliminated from the assembly process because reflow soldering method reduces the assembly cost potentially there are many functions planned in the reflow process its main aim is to use reflow process to melt the solder it also used to heat the adjoining surfaces the process is achieved without overheating the object it also prevents any damage to the electrical components there are many stages involved in this type of soldering if you see the typical conventional reflow soldering process mainly four steps are included these are referred as zones each zone has a distinct thermal profile they are preheat thermal soak reflow and cooling this graph represents that the maximum slope is a temperature and time relationship it measures how quick the temperature on the printed circuit board changes on its own the preheat zone is often the lengthiest of the zones it makes the imprint as the ramp rate often the ramp up rate is usually somewhere between 1.0 degrees celsius and 3.0 degrees celsius per second it is often falling between 2.0 degrees celsius and 3.0 degrees celsius 4 degree fahrenheit to 5 degree fahrenheit per second conclusion thus we have learnt about manufacturing techniques and the following in detail surface mount technology smt working with wave soldering and reflow oven working with smt rework station